Coming up on this week's episode of Capital City Sports, women's tennis takes on Mississippi State, softball battles the Kentucky Wildcats, and baseball is on the road at the Tennessee Volunteers. This is Capital City Sports. <laughs> Hello and welcome into this week's episode of Capital City Sports, I'm Pat Cloney. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we have something a little different to start off this week's episode for you. We have a track highlight. Our very own Aisha Marshall was at the men's and women's track match last week. Let's send it to her and check out her highlight. Last Wednesday, the Gamecocks held their final track and field meet of the season in Columbia. Jeffrey Linta, participating in the men's pole vault, set his new collegiate vest with a clearance of 4.75 meters to take the top spot. This was Linta's first collegiate win as he was one of the seven South Carolina athletes who won their events at the Invitational. Sophomore Colin Buxton participated in the pole vault event also. Josh Jones finished second in the men's long jump with a distance of 6.76 meters. Mykira Glimp Dantzler jumped 5.12 meters in the women's long jump, coming seventh overall. And senior Cece Chris had two second place finishes, landing a distance of 5.83 meters in the women's long jump and 11.99 meters in the triple jump. The Gamecocks next meet is the 69th annual Pepsi Florida Relays in Gainesville, Florida this Friday and Saturday. This is Aisha Marshall with Capital City Sports. Women's tennis was at home this weekend on Friday night. Jeremy Urso and his father were at this thrilling match. Let's take a look at Jeremy's highlight. Last Friday, South Carolina's women's tennis team went up against Mississippi State, USC's number two doubles team of Eliane Lashemia and Jimena Celeste Luna took on Mississippi State's team of Rosaline Dion and Georgiana Petras. USC is playing in the black uniforms and Mississippi State is playing in the red uniforms. USC got off to a weak start as there seemed to be some communication issues. They dropped their opening service game at Glove. However, USC would play better after a not top 10 service return and better communication by USC as Lashemia hits a nice volley to the center of the court. USC trails one game to two. USC would break back after another nice volley by Lashemia and break again after Jimenez Celeste Luna crushes the ball with a monstrous overhead. USC leads 4-2. to two. It's 6-3 USC, and there would be some drama on the court. Mississippi State serves the ball, but USC calls it out. The chair umpire confirms that the ball was out, and the players from Mississippi State don't appear happy about the call. Their head coach didn't like the call either, so he goes out to have a chat with the chair umpire. But despite the drama, the match would continue. Shortly after, the match was not finished because USC won its other doubles matches to win the one overall team point. USC only needs to win three singles matches, whereas Mississippi State needs to win four. So, after a 10 minute break, we move on to singles play, where USC's number two, Eliane Lashemia, faced Alexandra Perper. USC is in the black, and Mississippi State is in the red. USC got off to a great start as Lashemia's serve and volley style of play and great placement on her serve leads to winning the opening service game. As seen here, great service placement. She runs up to the net, hits a nice volley, and then hits another easy one over the net. And then boom, nice serve. She's gonna win the game and she leads one to love. 
USC had many break opportunities to go up 3-1, but could not convert. It's now tied 2-all. In the seventh game, Lashemia drops her serve after mishitting her forehand. USC is down 3-4, and then an ace by her opponent would lead USC to lose the first set four games to six. We move to the second set where Lashemia hits a nice return of serve. She would break serve in this game and lead 5-3, but then in the following game, Mississippi State would break back after a nice forehand passing shot, and they are back on serve. The second set goes to a tie break, and after a long rally, the Shemia's opponent puts too much power on her backhand and hits the ball out. USC wins the second set, seven to six, and we are going to a third set. And for those of you who don't think there are Gamecock chance at tennis matches, well, there you go. By this point in the match, both teams have three points in the competition, so the winner of this match wins the overall competition for their team. It's 6-5 USC in the third set, and after a beautiful four-handed volley, USC wins the match, and her teammates run onto the court to celebrate the victory. Lechemia wins the match to give her team the overall win against Mississippi State, four points to three. And play that sandstorm! Jeremy Urso, Capital City Sports. Hey everyone, welcome to the boardroom. My name is Alyssa Lang. Joining me, Jeremy Urso. Women's tennis took on Mississippi State this past weekend. Jeremy was there and he has the breakdown for us. Well, yes I do. Last Friday, my dad did go to the game with me to cover Mississippi State. And uh, I went to cover their number two doubles team and number two singles. And uh, one of the things that I noticed with first starting off with number two doubles, is uh, I cover the team of Eliane Lechemia from France and Jimenez Siles Luna, who I believe is from Lima, Peru. Wow. Yes. Far away. <laughs> and uh, but you know what? They make such a great doubles team. At first, they didn't get off to a great start, and I was like, "Ooh, I don't know about this," because they usually don't play together as a doubles team. Right. But uh, as the match progressed, like within three games, they re really had a rhythm, like just hitting nice volleys down the center. It was, they were like peanut butter and jelly. Really? Yes, but one of the things that I did notice is that on the opening service game, Eliane Lashemia, she seemed a little bit timid on her serve, a little bit scared, wasn't serving the ball as hard as I thought she could have been. But one of the things that made up for it was on the return game with Jimena Siles Luna. She has a great, unbelievable return of serve. She is like a Serena Williams in terms of power. She just loves to smack that ball over the net. She really has that passion and aggression. The only problem is sometimes is that sometimes she gets a little bit too aggressive and then she overpowers the ball and it goes flying out. So just a little bit, you know, she's got to control the ball a little bit, but overall she has great power. And then Elaine uh, Lashemia, she has a great volley. So they really did make a great team. And I believe they won, uh, well, no, their doubles match didn't finish as shown in my highlight <laughs> because the other two doubles matches were finished. So bottom line, Follow me on Twitter at I'm so Erso, hashtag finish this match. Very important to Jeremy that he pays good money to watch these tennis matches. For free, free for right? free. And they can't even finish the match. However, on the bright side, transitioning to singles, all the singles matches were completed. Um, Mississippi State, in order to win, they needed to win four singles matches because they did not win the overall doubles point. We only needed to win three. So... When I was covering this match, it, I covered number two doubles, and once again, it was Eliane Lashemia. And in the third set, each team had three points, and so you need four points to win. So this match came down to the wire in the third set. Whoever won this match was going to win this match for their team. And Eliane Lashemia... No pressure or anything. Yeah, no, no pressure at all. <laughs> and... Eliane Lashemia, I mean, I've seen her before, and honestly, I was a little bit disappointed in her playing. Like doubles, she was very timid on her serve. She needs to bend her back more uh, when serving the ball. I think she can really generate a lot of power from, her, from bending her back more on her serve. And also, um, she has, she's six foot one. She has great legs, and I don't mean that in a sexual way. 
However, she has these great, unbelievable long legs, and she can Good generate tennis legs. yes, and she can <laughs> generate so much power from these legs. And I just didn't see that power from her. She has so much potential, and she can be such a great player. She's a great player now, but she can reach so much if she uses power from her legs. Another interesting thing that I saw from Eliane Lashemia is that she is a serve and volleyer uh, woman's player, and you don't really see that. Uh, on the WTA, right. especially in college tennis. Um, that's because I, I guess women's tennis players tend to be a little bit smaller than men and, and, you don't, and they don't have that so strong of a serve as the men. But she has great service placement. After like one or two forehands or backhands, she'll run up to the net and just put the ball away. And she is a very great serve and volleyer. The number one thing to work on is nerves. She seemed very nervous during the whole match. And I didn't expect that from her. Before when I had seen her in previous uh, competitions. She seemed very aggressive. I don't know what it was. Maybe she saw me filming. I don't know. It maybe. It must have been you. Uh, maybe. She was very yeah. nervous that Capital City Sports was out. And, and you've done a lot of tennis highlights. I, I, I have. I she have. might have been nervous of all, you know, you might, Jeremy or so, might be going on a rant about her come oh. Thursday night. <laughs> well, I don't know about that, but she's a great tennis player. She has so much potential, and she did close out the match, and we did win it. Four to three, and an interesting thing was that this match started before the softball game on really? Friday. Yeah, it I know did. you mentioned something about the crowd. Yes, so the game started before the so softball match and ended after the softball match. So the crowd coming from the softball game uh, said, "Hey, wow, we have a tennis match going on," and right. this is pretty interesting. And so some people from the softball game started walking over to the tennis courts. I saw Haley Guyton there, and uh, just. A lot of people. And who is H Haley Guyton for people who don't know? Uh, she is uh, treasurer. Treasurer, right? yeah, I think student, so. New student body treasurer. Uh, yes. We could be wrong on that, but definitely a new student government position. Yes. Right? <laughs> well, anyway, she was there, and uh, other people were there, and they had Gamecock chants. It was, it was pretty loud. It was pretty good. It was a pretty good event overall. And so we closed it out 4 3 against Mississippi State. It shouldn't have been that close, but bottom line, a win's a win. And also, this past Sunday, we defeated Old Miss in a sweep. 4-0 to close out uh, the rest of our home competitions for the season. It's unfortunate that you won't get to go cover any more tennis games for us. Well, yes, it's unfortunate, and it's unfortunate for them as well because every time I went to go cover them, they were undefeated. See, uh, women's tennis team, your lucky charm is right here, apparently. Right here, <laughs> yep. Hit well, me up on Twitter at go. I'm so Urso. Hashtag, hashtag finish this match. Hashtag right here. <laughs> Well, Jeremy, is there anything else you would like to add about women's tennis that you missed? Overall, I'm so glad that my dad came with me. He recorded right. every point, and he was very... Shout out to Mr. Urso. <laughs> yes, and he was very happy that he came, and he picked a great match. So uh, it was just a great event, and it was a... I was so glad that I covered it, and uh, it just was a great way to uh, finish out uh, their closing season. All right, well, that will do it for our women's tennis breakdown. I know Jeremy mentioned that there was a women's softball game going on at the same time. Join us back in the boardroom where Austin Lewis will break down that softball match for us. Welcome back to Capital City Sports. Hey, guess who else was home this weekend? That's right, the softball team. They took on the Kentucky Wildcats on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Austin Lewis was at our Saturday game, and Aisa Marshall was at the Sunday game. Let's take a look at both of their highlights and then send it to the boardroom. On Saturday, the South Carolina softball team took on the 20th ranked Kentucky Wildcats. In the first inning, the Gamecocks would score four runs, taking a 4-2 lead into the second inning. That lead, however, would not last for long after junior Lauren Cummins hit a two-run home run in the third inning to tie the game up at 4-4. The Wildcats would take the lead in the fourth inning off of a sacrifice fly by sophomore Griffin Joyner at a very close play at the plate. In the fifth inning, starting pitcher Julie Surratt would be taken off for Katie Marks. The Gamecocks would gain some momentum after senior catcher Shelby Gonzalez would catch pinch runner Sarah Frazier out of second. That momentum would not last for long, as freshman Massey Steed would hit a double and drive in a run for Kentucky, making the score 6-4. Kentucky would put the game away in the seventh inning after a pinch hit three-run home run by junior Jenny Carroll. The Gamecocks would drop to 19-16 and 1-10 in the SEC. For Cavalcy Sports, this is Austin Lewis.
The Gamecock softball team finished off their three-game series against the Kentucky Wildcats Sunday afternoon at Carolina Softball Stadium. Senior shortstop Sammy Garcia joined the field after recently being drafted with the 14th overall selection in the 2013 National Pro Fast Pitch Draft. Garcia joined the New York, New Jersey Comets as their fourth round selection. She leads South Carolina in nine offensive categories this year. Kentucky's Alice O'Brien batted a good hit, but the Gamecocks were there to stop the Wildcat flow. Gamecock fans were hyped as the softball team carried the score 3-0 near the midpoint of the game. The Kentucky Wildcats increased their runs as Christian Stokes hit a wide left fielder. And Griffin Joyner making it safely to first base. Gamecock pitcher Julie Surratt threw a fast one, adding a strike to the Kentucky Wildcat batter. And the Gamecocks put an end to yet another play from Kentucky. Cody Yeski bats a good hit, securing her first base spot and adds another run to home plate for South Carolina by Sammy Garcia. Kristen Stewart's hit explodes through the field, making it a breeze for her to run the second base. But unearned runs help the Wildcats take a 4-3 win home over South Carolina. South Carolina's next non-SEC doubleheader is set for Wednesday against Coastal Carolina. This is Aisha Marshall with Capital City Sports. Welcome back to the boardroom. Once again, I'm Melissa Lang. Joining me now, Austin Lewis. He was at the women's softball game this past Saturday. It was Saturday, right? Or yes, Sunday? this past Saturday. This past Saturday. And he is going to give us a breakdown of the game. Austin, what happened this past weekend? Well, on Saturday, the Gamecocks scored four runs in the first inning. Was getting off to a really hot start. Everything was looking great because this is number 20 Kentucky, who this would have been a, actually a pretty huge upset for a 1-11 uh, South Carolina team. Right in the SEC, so we got off 4-2 to two lead, everything was looking great, and then our pitching, just our pitch, starting pitcher was Julie Surratt, and our, pitch, and our pitching just started to fall apart. In the third inning, Lauren Cumbus um, hit a home, hit a two-run home run and tied the game, and a sacrifice fly gave Kentucky lead 5-4 to four in the fourth inning, and they just kept extending the lead and putting the game away with a three-run homer in the, in the top of the seventh inning, and they would win the game 9-4. to four. So our, Oh, sorry. So Kentucky ended up beating the Gamecocks. Yeah, right. they would actually end up beating us all three games. Wow, sweet. <laughs> right. it, it was pretty awful. What were you about to say? I'm sorry, before I cut you off. Our hitting just, like, couldn't get going. Really? Their pitcher on the year, who started in the Saturday game, is 17-4 and four yeah. on the year. So she's been one of the top pitchers in the SEC. So she just, she just dominated us after the first inning. Well, another interesting tidbit that came out of women's softball this past week was Sammy Garcia. Of course, she was just drafted to the National Fast Pitch Association League. Can't exactly remember what the name of the league is, so I apologize. Um, 14th overall to the New York, New Jersey Comets. So that's exciting. It's very exciting. She's been a fantastic player for us all season and got incredible bat speed, a really great glove at, short bit, at shortstop. She's just been a really great all-around player and a really good senior leader for us. And she's actually the first Gamecock softball player to be drafted under current head coach Beverly Smith. So that's also very exciting for Coach Smith, too. It's actually a pretty historic accomplishment for this program. And Definitely. it's really good to sell to future players. Definitely. Well, is there anything else you would like to tell us about the softball game? Not really. It's just come out, support the team. They need your support every every. Every single game, a thousand people were at the last Saturday's game. So new stadium, right? Yeah, new stadium. Brand new. Ryan Athletic Village. So come out, support your Gamecocks, and we will see you next week. All right. Well, that will do it for our softball breakdown. Join us again in the boardroom. We will, of course, break down this past baseball series against the Tennessee Volunteers. Thanks for staying with us. Next, we have baseball. They were on the road this weekend against the Tennessee Volunteers. Jeremy and Austin are in the boardroom for you to break it down. Let's send it to them. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the boardroom. My name is Jeremy Urso. Alongside our baseball guru, 
Austin Lewis. So Austin, we had a, uh, a series against Tennessee this weekend, didn't we? Yes, we did. We won. We played Tennessee Friday, Saturday, and Sunday last weekend. We won the Friday game 5-4 with another very good Nolan Belcher start. Saturday we won 12-8, and Sunday we won 19-2. Well, that's pretty good. And that was SEC play, correct? Yes, this was in SEC play. Okay, just, just making sure, okay. Tennessee is in the SEC, Jeremy. Now, a couple weeks ago we reported uh, we got blown away by Arkansas at home. Is this an improvement? I know that Tennessee isn't in Arkansas, but I mean, is this a sign of improvement in, hey, we're getting better, we're swinging the bats more? We've actually swept the past two series. That's last good. week against Texas A&M, no, two weeks, two weeks ago against Texas A&M, mm -hmm. and last weekend against Tennessee. What makes this Tennessee series so impressive is that finally our, like, when our pitching wasn't at its best, except for the Sunday game, mm -hmm. our hitting carried us throughout the series. Sunday's game, we scored 19 runs. Max Strock, who has been very cold throughout the year, who he's been struggling, went 11 for 22 last week and won SEC Freshman of the Week. Man, that is pretty impressive. How's our defense been as well? Our defense has been okay. It's our fielding percentage is still great in the 970s, 980s. It's defense has always been a staple of South Carolina baseball, where we've always had we'll probably the top two or three fielding percentages in the SEC. So with Joey Pancake committing less errors than he did last year, the defense has got to be looking up. And so now that we have a new coach, is this a sign that we're, that's, that's showing, hey, we're, we're working better with our coach, we're getting into a groove, we're getting into a pattern, and the adjustment period is now kicking into effect and we're really starting to do great things? I really think we just started off slow because last year we started off 4-10 and, and made it to the national title game. So I just think this is just a matter of South Carolina just usual starting off slow, just like we're getting our feet wet and just getting adjusted to SEC play is always difficult, especially when you play teams like Arkansas. So playing teams like quality teams like Texas a and and Tennessee with Dave Serrano, former Cal State Florida coach, as their coach, and he's improving that program every single day. It's just it's very impressive for us to show like how how much better we're getting and that we will be a force to be reckoned with later on in the year. So we're going to keep getting better, is that what you're saying? Yeah, we're 8-4 in the SEC right now, and we're number 8 in the USA Today poll and number 11 in Baseball America, so we will keep on getting better. So when, when, Vanderbilt, comes to, when Vanderbilt comes to Columbia, number 2 Vanderbilt, and when we go to Alex Box Stadium and play number 1 LSU, it's going to be a heck of a series between a couple of great teams. So you're saying that all these other SEC should, teams should, should watch out? Well, I mean, it's South Carolina. They should always watch out. South Carolina's always been a quality program, the winningest program in the 21st century for the SEC. So this is just, a, it's, it's us showing that we haven't lost. Just because Ray Tanner is gone, that doesn't mean we've lost it and that we're going to take a step back. Winning these two series so convincingly, the way we have, where their offense finally starting to get it together, is it really shows that mixed with our pitching, we're going to have a really great team later on in the year. Anything else you'd like to add? Just go out and support your Gamecocks. Go out and support your Gamecocks is right. That's going to be it for us in the boardroom. And we bring it back to you, Pat. Have a good night. That's going to do it for this week's episode of Capital City Sports. Thanks for watching. Remember, if you want to check out more of our footage or just watch the episode again, you can go online to sgtv.sc.edu. Make sure to follow us on Twitter at CCS on SGTV and like us on Facebook. Just search CCS on SGTV. For all of us here at Capital City Sports, I'm Pat Cloney. Have a good night, Carolina.